Hi, my name is Anthony Pritchard, and you're watching the Denver YouTube Professionals Meetup Group. Um, we meet every month right here at the Denver Open Media Studios, and uh, I'm here with my guest speaker today, George Ira Carroll. Uh, we do three things here at Denver Open Media. We come together, we uh, share good knowledge, and we practice our trade. We practice making YouTube videos. And over the last year, we've had several really good topics that we've talked about. Um, how to rank on the first page of Google in 30 minutes or less. Um, how to create good sound bites in your videos. Uh, the art of video testimonials. And most recently, uh, creating videos with Denver YouTube Academy. So um, today, for the meetup group, we had planned to go live at 3 o'clock. But because there's so many moving parts and there's a lot of technology here in the studio, we got started at around 3.23. And, and that's just uh, reflective of the topic that we chose today. Today we're talking about emotional intelligence. And George is an expert on emotional intelligence. And I'll introduce him in a minute. And I'll tell you a story about how we met. Um, but before I do that, I want to just, uh, you know, tell you that, that not everything happens the way you plan it to happen. And that's, that's really uh, what we're going to learn about more, about emotional intelligence. When you, when you decide that you're going to do something, you, you step up right to the edge of the cliff, and you, you get almost scared to death that it's the hardest thing that you've ever done. But, but because you, you know that it's the right thing to do, it's, it's what's calling you, then then you dive off that cliff, and you know you just have faith that you're going to build those wings, you're going to grow those wings on the way down. So that's what we're doing here today in the studio. You know, and earlier we were talking about rolling with the punches, and the famous philosopher Mike Tyson once said, mm. everyone has a plan until you get punched. Right. We feel like we've gotten, been punched here today in the <laughs> studios, and... Um, and so we're getting back up, and we're, we're going to go with it. Uh, I think Rocky even had a similar quote to uh, Mike Tyson. Those boxers, they just know how to keep rolling with the punches. They do. They do. <laughs> so this is my guest, George Ira Carroll. And uh, we met about six or seven years ago at a networking group. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was really interesting because we had a lot of things in common. And I think right away we felt like this was a relationship that we were going to hold with each other for a long time uh, because of the things we had in common. Mm -hmm. And those things are uh, that we started our, our life you know, after high school in college football. And we had some, some success in football. And, and after we graduated, we got into a sales position. And in sales, uh, you get a lot of, of rejection. You get a lot of punches. And, and I think it forces you to learn uh, more about emotional intelligence. And, and because in sales, people lie to you a lot. And there's a lot of pressure to perform. And without having a good understanding of what's, what's happening in your life, you'll, you'll fail under the, the stress. So... George and I, you know, had that connection, and further on, uh, I supported him in his uh, launch of his career, and he supported me in my launch of mine, and uh, luckily, I was lucky enough to have him in the studio here today, and so I'll just, uh, I'll just pass the forum over to you, my, George, and we can kind of interact and exchange on the, the television show today and uh, help people learn more about emotional intelligence. Yeah, so the, the, one of the most important things about emotional intelligence that you want to keep an eye out for or at least have an awareness of is, is being aware of your emotions, being aware of how you feel. And as it relates to doing video, the more you do video, it's just like anything. You know, at, there were points in our life when we didn't know how to walk. Yeah. You know, we had no idea how to walk, but, you know, we got up and we stumbled and we fell and we got up and we tried again and we, eventually we started walking. Eventually we didn't know how to drive. You know, at some point we didn't know how to drive. We didn't know how to, how to even talk. 
And the thing with videos and getting, and getting better at them is mm -hmm. that the more you do them, repetition is the mother of skill. That's one quote I learned from Tony Robbins oh, along the way. Repetition is the mother of skill. And the more you do videos, the better you're going to get and the easier it is to be on camera. And so with emotional intelligence, the first key is, and we're going to cover quite a few things today, but the first key is being aware of the emotions and the energy that it's running through your body in each and every moment. And so we're going to cover you know, quite a few things over the course of, of the show today. And it will be an opportunity for you really just to check in to see, you know, are you, when you're doing videos, are you coming from a place of being aware of what your emotions are and, and also conveying certain emotions to the audience? And so as it relates to emotional intelligence, Anthony, what would you say uh, to our viewers is, is important uh, as it relates to emotional intelligence? Well, first off, when, when you decide that making videos is something that's going to be good for your business, uh, the first question you're going to have is, what do I say? You know, how, how do I get over the judgment of getting on camera and being judged by other people who are watching me? I mean, I might not feel like I'm an entertainer. I might not feel like uh, I have anything of value to say. But, but you're not going to have value with everybody that you talk to. It's true. It's true. Not everybody's going to resonate with your, you know, with your video and, and the work that you create. But think of it really like a good metaphor to think of it is as is a, uh, a radio station. So whatever city you're in, there's tons of different radio stations, right? Yeah. And not everybody's going to tune into country music. Not everybody's going to turn into rap music. But you're going to tune into what music resonates with you. So whatever your message is and whatever your content is, just know that there's going to be a large group of people that just simply don't resonate with your message. And the, the people who do are going to find you and they're going to follow you and listen to you. And over the course of time, you start building a, a large audience. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've been doing videos for the last five years or so now and and if you go to my YouTube channel I've got over 40,000 views and there's so much more room to grow even for me so the the industry changes a lot and what you need to learn from a technical aspect changes quite a bit too so that's why Anthony has these YouTube meetings is so you can stay up to date on, on the the latest strategies and the latest technology and also the latest techniques on how to get yourself on video and on camera right so YouTube is the second most watched or most searched search engine in the world and often referred to as universal university. People who are out there looking for you are constantly um, trying to solve their problems. And they go to Google and they go to YouTube and they try to solve those problems. And what they find is an, a, what I call a Dewey Decimal system of information. You know, there are written blogs, there are podcasts, Maybe there are, and there are videos. And video is emerging as the most effective content on the internet because it allows you to connect with your audience through four out of their five available senses. Their sight, their sound, their touch, and their emotion. And, and, if, it, and if it's a scratch and sniff video, you can smell them too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I tell people I have a nose for good video. <laughs> but, um, you know, this medium, this multimedia forum of video is very engaging and if used properly can get you found on the first page of Google which is so effective I and mean, if we're going to spend our time and energy to advertise our products on the internet then why would we waste our time on anything other than the most effective thing so George when we decide that video is the thing we want to do yeah. uh, and we're, we're still we have a little fear going on you know, how do I make a, how do I make this happen for myself? Um, what's that fear? Talk about ego and, and the fear a little bit. Yeah, so anytime that we are tapping into doing video, th there's so many things that start to come up internally for us as a result of it. And one thing that's a little bit, it, it's, it's a little bit out there as far as a concept goes, but you, you'll, you'll get it when I offer it, is that when we get on camera, the minute we push that little red record button, no, do you notice all the different, I mean, for those of you who are here and you push that record button for the first time, do you notice those, those feelings of anxiety and fear start to trickle up? So possibly, check in with this. What happens is, is when we push that red record button and then we, we, we're getting up the, the courage and mustering the courage on what we say next, what happens is we literally are tuning into and sort of psychically tuning into everyone who's ever going to watch that video and who's going to judge it. So the, all that anxiety, and I know it's kind of an out there concept, 
But when we tap into all of that energy, it brings all of this emotion, all of this energy, and all this fear up. And one of the fastest ways to overcome that is just to get super present with the camera. And a tool that I teach when I'm working with people on video is when you're creating videos, when you're looking into the eye of the camera, imagine and just connect with all the different people who are gonna be watching the video and really just start to pull some energy from them and start to connect with them even before they even watch it. I know it's a little crazy, it might sound a little kooky, but try it out and what will happen is you'll start to feel a sense of, of peace and calmness um, before you do the video. Because as it relates to emotional intelligence, if you're operating from a place of nervousness or of fear while you're doing your video, it's, is it really even you on camera or is it some egoic version of you who's just like maybe talking too fast? Man, I remember the first time when I started doing videos, I was just talking as fast as I could because I wanted to get them over with. <laughs> and I learned to get more present with the camera, to get more present with uh, the process so that my message was a heck of a lot more clear. And you know what happens when you do that is you learn a lot about yourself when you watch yourself on video. They say video is the best teacher or the best coach you can ever have. Mm -hmm. You remember seeing the first time you played football on video? Oh yeah, I remember. <laughs> it was a whole out of body experience mm -hmm. and it instantly, it, without saying a thing, taught you more about how to improve than any coach could have by just filling your ear full of words. That's a great point, that's a great point. So when you have those fears come up when you're first starting a video, not only working with the energy of all of it, but also being prepared, being prepared. You know, I think it was Abraham Lincoln once said, if I had eight hours to sharpen, or if I had eight hours to cut down a tree, I would spend six hours sharpening my ax. And so when you're creating videos in the beginning, my recommendation isn't just to do it on the fly, um, but to really have something prepared, some touch points that we're actually going to be talking about today, mm -hmm. some touch points that will help you kind of become more at ease as you're communicating whatever it is that you're going to get across. Another thing, like one of my strategies is just do it. And, and here's the thing, when you're doing videos, the, the only way people are going to see them is when you upload them to YouTube and make them public. And so you can do a ton of videos just getting practice and getting seeing you on camera, making fun of yourself. And be light and be fun with it. Don't be so serious and do your best not to judge yourself because that's the biggest thing that gets in the way of people really stepping in and having fun on camera. Absolutely. You know, when we make that decision, we're doing it. Uh, we've got to be present with the ego. And the ego is really one of the smartest parts about our personality. It protects us. And its main job is to keep us safe. And, and so that's when that fear comes up. That fear is maybe not justified. Maybe it doesn't have our best interests in its in its purpose. And so we just need to recognize, hey ego, thanks for, for letting me know that you know this is something that could make you know a big difference, but uh, I'm not gonna you know hide myself in bed with the covers pulled over my face and, and worry who you know who's coming to the front door. I'm gonna check you at the front door and I'm gonna say uh, thank you. For, for that fear and, and move straight forward into the camera. Yeah, you gotta go home, but you gotta get up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't gotta go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> so um, video is a lot of fun and, and really depends on why you're doing it. So you wanna get clear on why you're doing video, who you're communicating to, who you're talking to, um, and also what are the, deliver the deliverables? What are you, <laughs> it's so fun. I'm thinking back to some of the few videos that I did and just how horrible they were. In fact, I went into, I should have kept them on YouTube, but I deleted them because they were so bad. Um, but now I look at my videos and they're pretty solid just as a result of repetition and just getting up over and over and over and doing them over and over and over. Yeah. And so, you know, Anthony's spot on when he says that your ego is, is really designed to keep you safe. And when you choose to step into video, it really is a personal development experience. It's a personal development journey because you've got to be able to overcome those fears, those anxieties, and those, those limiting energies that flow through your body as a result of it. And just by continuously being on video, putting yourself out there, you start to overcome some of your fear of being seen and being judged. And that's one of the biggest ones that gets in the way of people stepping into doing video. So lots right. of different internal stuff that gets in the way, and we're really looking forward to exploring all of it with you today. Yeah, so the topic of the show is emotional intelligence, um, EQ for you, emotional quotient. And a long time ago, I'm not sure how long ago, but in this book, uh, they talk about IQ, which is 
the intelligent quotient. And people thought performance was based on how smart you were. How, how you performed was just connected to how smart you were or how much you knew. And when they finally did a study and they found out that performance wasn't actually tied just to how knowledgeable were, you were, but how emotionally sensitive you were, uh, they found that people who had more emotional intelligence outperformed those who had a higher IQ. So George, talk about IQ and EQ and how we can use it to perform better. Yeah, so there's, there's the mental intelligence and then there's the emotional intelligence. When we start to tap into the emotional intelligence and the emotional awareness of what's going through our bodies, we just have a greater sort of uh, expanded reach in, in what we can do when we're tapped into our emotion because our mind can be so limited at times, but when we're tapped into our emotion and we're really flowing from a place of being aware of, of the energies and, and the, the, the feelings that are coming through your body, you can really contribute that, especially as it relates to doing video, you can literally create a... Um, a bridge where you're conveying the energy, conveying the emotion and the feelings to your audience as a result of it. So when you're doing video, not only knowing who you're talking to, knowing what your, your touch points are that you're going to be talking about, but also you're, you want to be really aware of the, the emotion that you are sending across through the video. And mm -hmm. one of the most powerful ways to do, the, do that is through the power of story. So we can talk about mm -hmm. with you here you know, how fear gets in the way of you doing more and more videos, or we can tell you a story about you know, the first time that I was in front of a camera and how I had to retake probably about 30 or 40 different times before I finally got to the point where I'm like, this is never going to be perfect. I'm just going to get it out of the way. And so that fear of perfection is a big thing too. And that gives me a chance to connect with you, to have a common ground with you, George. I remember my first time getting on camera. I did the same exact thing. I stood there in front of the mirror. I stood there in front of my camera. I tried to remember the script that I was going to say, and I said it over and over again. And I watched it each time that I made it. And I wasn't happy with it until about the 22nd time. Yeah. <laughs> but it taught me a lesson. And, it, and I was determined. And you know, now I, I use it a lot to help promote my events, to help uh, explain and educate the services that I provide, and to help just attract people to my business. Tell, tell the audience the ways that you use video. Well, there's so many ways. So one of the primary ways that I use video is I've got a weekly video series called One Minute Motivation. And it's a challenge for me because I've got to try to condense a message or a story or a tool or something that can help people um, within one to two minutes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm a speaker and a trainer. I travel the country and I, you know, speak to corporate audiences. And, you know, the shortest workshop that I have is a full day. So for me to try to condense a message into a minute or two is really challenging. Um, but also it cuts the fat. You know, this is a term that I use a lot is it cuts the fat because a lot of times I think sometimes we tend to like, you know, go on and on about something. But the really when you're forced to do a short video, one to two minutes, it gives you really the meat and potatoes of the message that you're trying. So mm -hmm. so that one minute motivation series is really for anybody who is just watching me on my journey and enjoys the messages that I offer. And if they're on my newsletter, they get access to those one minute motivation videos every single week. And it's just an opportunity for me to give value, you know, mm -hmm. to my audience and to mm -hmm. potential customers and clients um, and just give free value so people can get a glimpse of, of the work that I do and, and the different things that I offer. Um, I also use them in longer training videos. You know, I have 30 and 40 minute training videos where I'm sitting there, you know, in front of, uh, uh, you know, one of those big whiteboards and I'm drawing certain diagrams or I'm teaching certain concepts. Um, and those are very valuable too in terms of creating online programs. So you can use video as a way to to sell services and, and your knowledge and your experiences online as a way to create value for your potential clients and customers as well. Yeah, video is the power to duplicate you. Mm -hmm. You know, we always wish that we had this uh, clone because we've got so much to do. Yeah. How can I do everything? Well, I wish I had a clone for myself. Well, video can actually do that. And uh, we were both in sales. We started with uh, the job requirement of generating interest in our products or our services and we were taught to go door to door and talk to business owners about their phone bills mm -hmm. and compare their their internet and their phone and 
uh, we said, hey, we can give you more phones, more internet for uh, a, l a lower price. And so why wouldn't you want to talk to us, right? right? But that was just one to one. We were only able to influence or impact one decision maker. Mm -hmm. Now with video, we can impact more people and generate interest on the, not the one to one sales model, but the one to many sales model. And so, you know, fill in on that, George, how, is, how have you noticed yourself and your sales uh, ability changing over the years? Wow, you know, it's a great question because when, you, when you're doing video, you do have to relay the benefits and the value of whatever it is that you might be offering through a video. And so as just a result of doing video over and over and over again and um, creating valuable content for people to listen to, when you get into a one-on-one -on -one situation where you're talking to a potential client or ready to close a deal or whatever it might be, just because of the practice that you've had on video over and over and over again, a lot of times those conversations just become second nature because you're so aware of what the value that you bring is, the benefits that you have are, and it just becomes second nature. It's really, it's really that easy. So what about you? What are some of the ways that, that you've used video? And I'd love to take you know an audience poll here in a moment of, of what are some of the challenges that you guys face with creating videos, but how do you use video and, and how have you seen it grow your, your reach in your business? Yeah, well, I've, I've just been experimenting with it a lot. I've had some ideas on some series that I would utilize it. And um, so I'm still, I guess, collecting information on how I'm gonna use it, but I've used it in the same way. I've, uh, I've said, you know, come to my event, that's probably the biggest way that I've used it is mm -hmm. to promote events, um, services, uh, and, and testimonials mm -hmm. is one of the big things. Uh, we did a, a, a class here with the meetup group called Video Testimonials, and we did that because out of all people who purchased a product or a service online, who surveyed, had watched a video testimonial, 89% of them said that the reason they made that purchase was because of the video testimonial. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I've watched video trainings in uh, jobs that I've had before that have taught me how to maybe install a product or a service, how to answer the phones properly, or how to uh, even walk my customers through the sales process. Mm -hmm. So not only can video be good for marketing externally in your business, but it can be good internally for training your, your workforce. Yeah, that's a good point. So I mean, really, with video, the only thing that limits you is the, your amount of creativity with it. There's really anything that you can do on video. And it depends on where you are. If you are thinking about starting a business, you know, or if you're already in a business, you want to get clear on why you're creating the video. Um, and if you're first starting, being clear isn't important. Just get on and just give things a try and just let it loose and have fun and make mistakes and laugh at yourself. Um, but again, it's like you've got to stumble a, a lot before yeah. you start to get to the point where you feel comfortable on camera, where you feel comfortable. You know, now um, part, with part of my business, I travel and I do media tours where I get on uh, different like Fox News 7 in Austin or CBS in Austin and, and those local television stations and I would have never been ready for those TV interviews if it weren't for just doing getting in front of my computer using that little eyeball and getting myself on camera so you can take it as far as you want to go and really it's so much of it is what we're talking about here is about being emotionally aware and being present with the camera because uh, I'm sure you've seen video, and I'm sure you've seen video, I'm sure you've all seen videos where the person isn't, like, they're not really there. It's more or less a person just kind of, like, spouting off information, and you can just tell they're not present. But the ones that really draw us in are the ones who are being super present, they're really aware, and, and they're not coming from a place of fear or anxiety. Right. They're coming up from a place of pre presence or maybe passion or enthusiasm, mm -hmm. uh, joy and excitement. So the more energy that you have on camera, the more energy you radiate, the more joy you have have enthusiasm, the more people are going to want to watch you. Absolutely, George. I agree with you 100%. And when I asked uh, a former Channel 9 newscaster, Neil Brown, how do you know what to say when you get on camera? Neil, he said, well, because the best talkers on video have so much passion that the curtains could be on fire and the building could be burning down, but they have so something that's so important to say that that they can't help but just expressing such passion and enthusiasm for the content that they're sharing. Mm. And it, it really falls back to the, 
the character that you have about the, the topic. So, you know, if you're interested in something, take the time to research it. Take the time to be the expert on it, to be the authority on it. And then making the step to video will be just that much easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, even if you like cooking, you know, yeah. you can video tape yourself cooking and, and throw up a video blog. And that's one of the most common ways that people start to use video is through a traditional easy video blog on WordPress where you upload your videos to YouTube on a specific topic. If it's cooking, for example, and mm -hmm. I'm curious, what are you guys interested in? What topics are you interested in out there in, in videoing? Say again? Diamonds. 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 So, you know, there's a lot of people interested in diamonds out there, so she could do some videos on diamonds. Have you already done videos on diamonds? No, not yet. That's why she's here. Awesome. Yeah. Yoga, cool. Yoga is exploding right now. Yeah, you know, so uh, you could do video. Have you done videos on yoga? I have. You have. Two, uh, two. That's a great start, isn't it? So when you start to do more and more, and maybe even start to look at creating um, a series that people can follow you on, like a video blog, and we'll explore different ideas on how you can use video. Um, but there's really you're only limited by your creativity. What else is out here? A solo wheel. Transportation device. Ah, the solo wheel. I don't know if I've seen that. Maybe we can get a demonstration a little bit later today. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Well, part of the program is to practice making videos, and now with a few people in the audience, I think we can go ahead and include that part of the program. So make a video on your solo wheel, and we'll see it here on the, the broadcast. Yeah, so in a little bit, we're gonna actually have you guys pair up, and I'm gonna give you just a really a quick and easy video strategy that you can use at any point in time that I've used hundreds of times for my videos. And really, it's just an easy template that you can go through that creates a three to four minute video. And it's, it's a lot easier than we make it out to be, but as long as we have just some touch points and some structure, it just, it can put us at ease knowing what we're going to talk about and having the space to free flow because, again, we don't want to just be so structured where we just seem so tight. Um, we want to have, we want to be loose. We want to have free flow a little bit. We want to just allow the information to flow through too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, George, there's a few more techniques we can use when creating videos. And a couple of them that I wanted to talk to you today were about getting vulnerable mm. and visualizing. Because I know when we take the time to prepare in those ways, we can be more present and be more passionate like we've just been talking about. Yeah. Do you mind? Talking about those two things? Yeah. So visualization is one of my favorite tools that I've used. I used to be a, a depressed corporate sales manager. Tony, Anthony was talking about it a little bit earlier. But I used to be a depressed corporate sales manager and a pharmaceutical sales rep. And along that time period, about almost a decade ago now, I read a book called Psycho-Cybernetics, and this book teaches you the power of using visualization, not only as a way to increase your own self-confidence, but also as a way to start creating certain things in your life. And so I, I remember at the beginning, I started visualizing myself in front of like large and small audiences a, as a motivational speaker, and I had no idea how it was going to unfold or how it was going to happen or even if it was ever going to happen. I just knew that going into the theater of my mind and imagining myself in front of audiences felt a heck of a lot better than the depression that I was feeling at the time. And so uh, as soon as I started visualizing, within about three and a half years or so, I had started a speaking training and coaching business, and I totally owe it to visualization. So here's the cool thing about visualization is the mind doesn't know the difference between something that you vividly imagine and something that you actually experience. It has no idea what the difference is. And so when you begin to go into your mind and you imagine yourself, you know, with, you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of views on YouTube and you start to imagine yourself on video, your brain starts to, to communicate to yourself that this is happening now. And as a result of it, your, your behaviors are influenced. And here's something that's really cool. And you guys will get this because this is something that happens to all of us. So there's a part of our brain called the reticular activating system, and this part of our brain keeps an eye out for anything that we hold in our dominant focus. It's almost like a radar. And so when we focus on anything consistently, it starts to come into fruition. And not only that, but we start to attract the circumstances, the experiences, the people and events to make that thing happen. So here's a palpable and a specific uh, area of our lives that it happens. So for, for those of you, who, how many of you have ever gotten a brand new car or a new car? Yeah. We all have, right? Mm -hmm. And what do you tend to notice more of as you're out driving your new car? The same. The same yeah, car. The same car. Cars just like it, right? And the question is, were those cars always there? Yeah, yeah. Of course they were. <laughs> but we just tuned part of our brain to keep an eye out for things that were just like it. 
Because what happens is we get a new car, we get all excited about it, right? We take selfies of it, put, it, put us on Facebook. You know, we got all this attention. We can't wait to get up in the morning, drive our car to work, can't wait to leave work so we can drive it home. Weekend comes, we go drive our car. We got all this love and attention and energy on this new car. All of a sudden, doo -doo 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 -doo, we start seeing this car everywhere that we go. And so the power of visualization really will help influence your behaviors and it will help literally mold and rearrange the field around you so that you start to step into being the vision that you see yourself in. Absolutely. You know, I think we grew up in a society that felt like they had to have control over everything. And if they didn't have control over the situation, then they got stressed. And what you're saying is that the way you get confident about going into a situation is by going through a meditative practice, mm -hmm. Uh, visualizing all the different scenarios that could happen and, and in fact choosing to visualize the most positive mm -hmm. things that could happen and then going into the situation fully prepared. Obviously today I didn't think I did en enough visualization. I could have done a lot more. So tell us what the practice looks like. How long does it take and how often do you do it? Okay, great questions. So the thing that we have to remember is that we're already visualizing. Our lives really are um, a combination of all the the images that we've already thought on a daily basis like we think most of us think in images consistently and so those images that we see consistently are creating our reality over and over and over again and the biggest thing the biggest reason why most people's lives don't change is because they're responding to the the, the images and the things already around them which perpetuates it to show up just more and more and more mm -hmm. so as it relates to getting prepared in your mind the process is very simple and it, just like anything, the more time you spend doing it, the stronger your muscles will be doing it. So when you first get started, all you have to do is drop into a relaxed state. All right, so you just, for me, all I would do is I would sit down, take a nice few deep breaths in, and you guys wanna do this? Yeah. All right, so get comfortable in your chairs. For our live studio audience here, just get comfortable. And just get relaxed and close your eyes. And you can, if you're watching this right now from home or wherever, you can do this too. So just close your eyes. And just take a couple of slow, deep breaths in. and get really present. Feel the chair underneath you and feel the floor that supports the chair underneath you. And feel the earth that supports the floor that supports the chair underneath you. And now take another deep breath in, relaxing even more. Now just begin to imagine, just let images start, start to flood through your mind of having a successful YouTube channel, thousands and thousands of viewers. What does that look like? What do you see? Imagine yourself doing videos consistently, enjoying the process. What does that look like? What does that feel like? Imagine all the people out there who will be watching them and the joy they'll get from watching you. And notice the image that you see. Is it in color or black and white? And if it's in color, make it bigger, brighter. Now, are you associated, meaning are you in the image, or are you seeing yourself from afar? If you're seeing yourself from afar, step in to that image. There you go. just take note of some of the details. And when you're ready, take another deep breath in and open your eyes. So how many of you were able to get an image that showed up 
cool. How many of you began to kind of feel the energy of the image? Yeah. So in those moments, the more real you made it, your brain doesn't know the difference between that image being real or an actual experience. And when you do that over and over and over again, because your brain thinks it's real and your brain is really the main hub of your behaviors, you will influence your behaviors to start doing those videos, mm -hmm. right? So here's a really kind of a cool story about visualization. So when I was actually interviewing for my pharmaceutical sales position, and before I'd go in for each interview, I would literally close my eyes and I would imagine me shaking my boss's hand, both of them, and them saying, congratulations, you're hired. And I made them say it really loud and I got it really strong into my body. And by the fourth interview, what was so cool was that I had my, my regional boss and my national boss there interviewing me. And as my national boss was asking me questions, I would just like say what was coming to my mind. To, I, I got hired and the exact image that I had in my mind, they both said, congratulations, you're hired. And a few days later, I had dinner with my regional boss and he told me, he said, George, it was amazing. He said, when, you were, when you know, Paul was asking you a question, who was my national boss at the time, he says, when you were being asked questions, I was thinking of the answers and you were saying exactly what I was thinking in my head. And so it's pretty amazing what we're capable of when we're able to envision the outcome that we want to create consistently over and over and over again, we can create magic. Absolutely. Uh, and vulnerability, it's another tool we can use to get present mm -hmm. with video uh, along with visualizing. Mm -hmm. what, how do you create vulnerability in your videos? Mm -hmm. What a great question. So vulnerability is that place, and I think there's a lot of misconceptions with vulnerability in that vulnerability is like a weakness. But really vulnerability is one of our greatest strengths. And when we're allowing ourselves to tap into being vulnerable, we sort of become a chameleon and we have access to way more information. We're sort of like this open channel for information to flow through. And when we allow ourselves to just kind of drop the fear and drop the ego and drop all the emotions that want to kind of come in and force themselves through, and we allow ourselves to be the space of vulnerability, we can just intuitively connect with our audience more through camera or even in person. And so it's not about vulnerability as a weakness, so don't be vulnerable. It's like vulnerability is one of our greatest strengths as it relates to communication because uh, we can intuitively connect with our audience pretty much instantaneously. So one way I use vulnerability is through stories, which you've just mm -hmm. uh, given as an example. Uh, stories of failure happen to be one of the most powerful ones because everybody experiences failure. Mm -hmm. So that's another way that people can connect with you uh, or a way you can connect with your audience is by sharing with them a story of your failure. That's probably the best way I can think of to use vulnerability in videos. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's more than just a story of failure. It's a story of, of overcoming that failure, mm -hmm. which can lead them to maybe not make the same mistake you made. Um, you know, as a coach, I, I teach soccer, and uh, I feel like I have this calling to teach soccer because I made so many mistakes when I was learning how to play soccer, and I feel like I can help these boys uh, advance their learning by giving them guidance to overcome some of those mistakes that I made early on. Or even, you know, pointing out some of those mistakes that I'm noticing they're making right away. Um, so that's one tool that I use. And it's, this is a great example. I'd love to stop here and just kind of yeah. expand on it too because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times we tend to see people being really successful in their lives, but we don't see all the little things they did along the way to become what they've become. Yeah. You know, I remember reading Anthony Robbins' first book, Unlimited Power, and he starts off the book talking about how he was doing dishes in his bathtub because he lived in like a 300 square foot studio apartment and how he had this hammock, you know, that swung across his apartment because he couldn't afford a bed and his desk was underneath the hammock and so he didn't have that much space and to see like him sharing that story about where he came from and what he's created now in the world it gives people yeah. a realistic awareness of what could happen along the way when you're chasing your dreams that you're gonna fall on your face and when you're willing to share those experiences when you do fall on your face and what you learned in them and and like Anthony so brilliantly said share your failures with people they see you more of it as a real person versus this image and this person who's just trying to fake um, being some sort of, uh, you know, not unreal personality that's, that doesn't go through and have issues. Because we all have them, and why not share them? They're really powerful. Right now I've got this funny image in my head of Tony Robbins sleeping in a hammock 
over his <laughs> desk. The guy's a, a monster. He is a monster. How did he fit in a hammock? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> okay, so um, we've got a few things we can do next. Um, I wanted to see what you felt comfortable with. We've got a, a news broadcast that we can interject here that might be good to break it up. Uh, and then we can circle back around and talk more about emotional intelligence uh, before we close out the show. So what do you think? I, you know, let's break. But first, let's get a few audience members just to share what you'd like to get out of today's session. Would okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Let's do that. So, yeah, if, if you can get one thing out of today, what would it be? The fear of letting go of tr how can, making sure my creativity fulfills the expectations of future paying clients. Because if I don't, I'll lose pay, future paying jobs from people who want to hire me. Right. Do we want to share in the mic? We, it's probably, I, I don't know if I can repeat what you said, Scoop, so if you could share into the mic, then that would help the All audience. Right. Making sure my creativity fulfills the expectations of future paying clients, and because if I don't, I'll lo lose future paying jobs from people wanting to hire me for their videos. That's number one. Okay. Number two, I'm about making money fast so I can get my bills paid and get more views up to one million and beyond because today it's all about gaining acceptance these days. Without it, you could be out of a TV job, you could be out of a sales job, you could be out of anything. The only question I've got is, how can I have fun, let go of the fear of getting more views and pleasing people and just have fun being creative? What a great question to ask. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Anybody else want to share? Yeah. I don't know if we'll be able to get to everybody who is out there. <laughs> One of the things you've already started to uh, fill me in and and that's, that's the uh, envisioning what's, what I need to do. Mm -hmm. One of my biggest fears has, has been how do I continue to produce videos that are not redundant but are constantly fresh, mm. who, that, that continue to captivate people's interest instead of being the same thing over and over and over again. In other words, get enough variety that the uh, the interest stays high. Yeah, you know, let's. Is it okay if we explore this now, or do we need to? Well, the you know the broadcast I think is going to answer some of that. The newscast, I mean, okay, is going to answer that question. But I think we can answer it as well after the newscast. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Nice and clear. Hi, you want to come up and share? Hello. I am interested in uh, getting my content more condensed and accurate so that I have a shorter bit of information rather than drawing it out too long. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Nice. Yeah. Nice focus there. Important. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. The fastest way to initially get beyond that is have targets without expectations. Well, I'm, I'm here in I came here with an open mind because I didn't know what I was coming here for. But I'm in construction, but I don't do a whole lot of work. So how, does, how would this work for construction? Great question. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Nice to have your clarity here, guys. Great. Okay. So we've got uh, Scoop's question about how, how, can, how can he please his audiences? Uh, Dan's question about keeping it fresh. Uh, uh, Jamie's question about how to how to keep content concise and uh, construction videos. Cool. You know, one of my favorite quotes goes like this: "Haters are just confused admirers." Mm. That's deep. That's deep for a YouTube professionals meetup. <laughs> I know. But here's the thing. When we choose to do video, we, we leave ourselves susceptible to judgment of people, and you can't avoid it. People are already judging you anyway. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, you might as well just step up, do a lot of video, get yourself out there into the world, and be seen and judged more. Because the more you can be judged, the, the thing is, you're doing a good job. So mm -hmm. welcome the haters. Love yeah. them up. They're going to be there. They're going to express their opinions. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's anything you can do about it. I mean, in sales, we get a lot of rejection. Yeah. And so I think we learned how to do our best to kind of... I don't know, build up thick skin, Yeah, that's a way yeah, to do it. Yeah, definitely a way to describe it. Because if you know you don't, there's, there's two choices, success or failure. And to, to change your behavior based on what somebody else thinks of you is choosing to you know, just quit or fail. Yeah, it's ludicrous. So another thing to keep in mind about, or about haters before we move forward here yeah. is, is what if haters are just secretly asking for permission to shine? Something to think about. Okay, so I think we're going to move into our next segment. We're actually going to go through some tools and tactics and teach you some structure on how to create a simple video. If you don't know where to start, this is a phenomenal place to start. So uh, where do we want to take it from here? Do we want to answer the questions? Yeah, so let's, yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, let's answer those questions. The first one we had was from Scoop. He wanted to know how he could please everyone out there. Mm. He said... Uh, he's got to build this viewership, and he needs to know how to do that. Well, I, I think my first reaction is that he can't please all of his viewers. Mm. There's no possible way to be, uh, you know, number one for everybody. You, but you do have to start somewhere. And letting, letting the idea that people aren't going to like you prevent you from starting is, is really that limiting belief that we need to get over right away and that's what we're talking about here today is getting over the limiting belief of not being able to make videos and just being intelligent enough to say I'm gonna start somewhere you know Marie Forleo says it's okay to start sucky yeah she said the first uh, seminar she put on was in her basement and she had five people there mm -hmm. but uh, you know it wasn't perfect and that's okay because you've got to really start somewhere and uh, you know, in five years, you'll look back and you'll say how great it was that you started somewhere. You, you actually did get started. Yeah, start sucky. Start sucky. Another thing with Scoop's question is, is that we, if we're clear on who our target audience is when we're doing videos, if we're super clear on who our target audience is um, and we have a clear message that is going to communicate directly to them, we can have a greater impact on them and you know it it really does take some research on your target audience to know what are their biggest problems you know so as you're doing videos and you're starting a business or you already have a business you want to know what are the greatest what keeps your clients and your customers and your potential customers up at night and what ways can you help solve those issues and how can you communicate that through video in a way that has them wanting more of you so, uh, you know, a great video strategy is just create a, a monthly video or a weekly video that continues to touch on the primary problems that your target audience has and just continue to provide them that free value, that complimentary value through video. And over the course of time, you're going to be their go-to person on hiring you for whatever it is that you do. Exactly. Now, remember that people go searching for solutions to their problems. And you can use a tool called a keyword research tool to discover how many times a day people are searching for the problem or that keyword that you're creating your content on. So uh, you can do that geographically, how many people are searching in Denver, or maybe it's just Lakewood. Uh, and it's going to be smaller, obviously, in Lakewood than it is nationally or even globally, but uh, it's going to be easier to be found locally than it is globally. So when you make your video, make sure to title it with that keyword and, and a geographic location. So to make a quick impact, that geographic location like YouTube is going to be important, or like Lakewood is going to be important in the title. Yeah. So hopefully that answers your question, Scoop. To, uh, to make an impact, uh, you're not going to be able to serve any, everybody, but you are going to be able to serve those people who are actively looking to, to solve their problems right now, especially locally in your little corner of the world. Yeah, yeah. So next we had Den and his question about 
how to create fresh content mm. that people are constantly entertained with. How do I c create a series of videos that allows my audience to stay engaged with me? Dan, you want to come up to the mic and have a little interaction? Oh, yeah. That's a good, good point. Because I do have a couple of questions that kind of pop for me. So for you, who is your target audience? Well, my target audience is uh, uh, mostly athletic uh, young men and women who want to use a transportation device. And also they're passionate about uh, using less gasoline. They're passionate about our environment. Using tr public transportation, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my target audience because those are the people who are going to give up their their automobiles to ride solo wheels, which is an electric device. Gotcha. And is that your product or is that? No, it's actually uh, invented by a Washington State uh, citizen. His name is Shane Chen. Okay. And his okay. focus is inventing, so mine is selling. So one, one tip that I'll offer here, and I'd love for you to jump in too, mm -hmm. is one way to create an infinite amount of content is through interview series. So what other people can you use out there who are already living this lifestyle and how can you reach out to them? And you can use Google Hangouts as a, it doesn't matter where they live. You can use Google Hangouts as a way to create a live video interview mm -hmm. um, and those automatically post to YouTube. So having an interview series with people who are, have already lived, stepped into living the lifestyle that you're talking about, that's a great way to create content. So a monthly interview series would be my suggestion. Excellent, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, people are unique, as you know. There are people that are different, and there are people that are really different. And so by simply taking your device out into the world and asking people if they wouldn't mind experimenting with it, capturing their reactions, and um, capturing those different types of people could really be interesting for me to watch. So that might be a suggestion that I have for you. Mm. Also an excellent thought. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, and then the, the third question was... Jamie, she asked, how can I keep my content concise? You want to come up to Would the mic? Would you mind? Yeah. Yeah, so can you expand more on your question? What, what's, what's the ideal target you're looking for? So I am... My target is pretty wide. So um, I want to have people that are fit, people that have injuries, people that are um, looking for emotional help. So it, it goes on. There's okay. more. And are you, are you looking to potentially create a video series where you've got pretty, you know, tight content? Yes. Yeah, okay. So do you, have you considered a monthly video series or even a weekly video series? I am where you work, like maybe you interview or you talk with your clients, some of the ones who have achieved certain results and what they work through. So that's a possibility as well. Yes, especially for the global, the ones that are, you know, I work globally as well. Yeah. So another, another thing that pops here for me is, what if you made like a list of 50 different issues or challenges that your work can be a remedy to? Yes. And you did a, a quick video. One-on-one -on -one yoga. Um, you're relaxed, you're comfortable. Um, we address specific issues if you're afraid of being embarrassed or just plain out shy. And one-on-one -on -one is a way to learn faster so that we can address specific issues for you. And um, I'd like to invite you to experience this uh, by giving you a free complimentary 20-minute session um, by coming to my yoga studio and the website is uh, www.lifepurposeyoga.com the phone number is 303-601-6016 so come on and get over to the studio and we'll we'll help you thank you all right nobody died nobody, wow nobody died she didn't she's still alive <laughs> <laughs> She's a natural. Okay, good. So now you've got one practice through, right? Mm -hmm. So now do it again on camera. And okay. but there's no difference. Okay. Say one. <laughs> yeah. So just whenever whenever he's ready, he'll All give right. you the nod. Hi, my name is Jamie and I'm here in Denver, Colorado with Life Purpose Yoga. I'm a private therapist and I help people and I want to help you. I think a common issue for people 
getting into yoga is that they feel a bit embarrassed or maybe just shy. They don't know enough about it and they want to understand it. So that's what I'm here to help with. And um, I put you in a one-on-one -on -one yoga that creates a comfortable, relaxed, light atmosphere. So you don't feel, you feel natural. You feel yourself. So as I invite you now to come to a free complimentary class from me, it'll be 20 minutes, and you can reach me at 303-601-6016. My website is www.lifepurposeyoga.com. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing you. All right, round of applause. Yay. So the trick is with rep repetition is the mother of what? Skill. Remember we talked about that? So just the more you practice that, and you might not use this footage uh, for your website, but the more you practice that and you get it down, it'll come across really smooth, really confident, and I mean, you're already starting off on a great foot too. Yeah, you need some help. Thank you. Welcome. Cool, so that's just a really quick and easy strategy to get started because we don't want, one of my favorite quotes these days is from Tony Robbins. Anthony Robbins says that complexity is the enemy of execution. Mm. And the more complex we make something, the less likely we are to execute it or even do it. So if you're just getting started, you, you just want to try this quick strategy. A great way to just ease into the process of, of making videos. Sure. Um, can I give it a try, George? Let's, yeah, yes. OK. Yes. All right. Um, here's my phone. I'll let you uh, yeah. throw it on me. We talk about practice. <clears throat> practice. Yeah. Yeah. I got to turn it on the video function. Cool. So step one, all you got to do is introduce yourself. Step two, what's the problem? Step three, what's the solution? Step four, what's the call to action? Right. Now I'm going to switch step one and step two. Is that you, okay? You can't. You have to do it exactly the way I say it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. All right, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Hold on, it's... Uh... Have you ever thought, I wish I just had more business? I wish more people would call me on the telephone? Well, if you do, if you're somebody that's asked that question, I've got a tip for you. My name is Anthony Pritchard. I'm a certified Google partner, and I work for Excite Media Group, and I help businesses get found on the internet about the internet is that it's very specific to the person who's searching. It, Google is optimized to give the end user the best experience. And so what it does is it the end user. For example, if I was in my car driving around this neighborhood and I flipped <laughs> audio search tab, have you guys used that? Where you ask Google a Okay, Google, find babysitter, right? What Google does is it and it, it sends out this, this query in your specific area, and it takes all businesses that have registered with Google, and it produces those in a results list. So if I was right here and I was searching babysitter on my phone, then it would give me a list of the closest babysitters. So that means that for everybody, you can be on the first page of Google just based on where people are looking for you. And all you have to do is go to a, fill out your Google My Business page. And it's part of your G Plus account. But just go into the Google search engine and type in Google My Business, fill out all the information there, and don't forget to upload images and videos like this one of yourself and the business that you offer so that people can find you and they can see who you are and they can get to know, like, and trust you better. Thanks. Round of applause, huh? Cool. So I, 
so uh, you, you flipped around a couple of the steps. Talk about what you did and why you did that, because I think it's an important teaching point. Good. Well, the first thing I did was I asked the question, have you ever? And of course, everybody's always wanted more business, and they wanted more people to call them on the telephone. So that's going to give me a pretty good draw to keep people engaged for the entire length of the video. And that's what I want them to do. I want them to watch the whole video. I'm not sure how long that was. But two minutes. I could probably, by giving you that hook, keep you for at least five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I'll tell you who I am and what I do because that's important information too. And um, I feel like it's second most information important based on or compared to the problem. But I'll tell you exactly who I am and then I'll, I'll go into the tip. And that's exactly what I did and um, how to do it and how they can do it too. And then just the tip. I mean, just off. I didn't the tip. even give the call to action, really, but I didn't have to. Yeah, it was a great video, great succinct, great value, and, and you noticed probably how much value he offered inside of the video. Most of it was giving them tips and ideas on where to go and what to do. And there's, I mean, there's something to be said for adding lots of value in a video like that because people are going to want more because they know you're going to consistently add value. Yeah. yeah, and I like that switch actually. The mm -hmm. question first and then who you are. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna use that strategy, so thank you. Yeah, well yeah. thank you, George. Okay. I've really had a lot of fun working with you up here today. I'm not <laughs> if there's any other questions, we'll be happy to answer them. And, uh, and I feel like this is a great spot to end the show. Yeah. Any questions? Great, the only thing I'm gonna do is just suggest a topic for next time, I've already alluded to it. Next month, the topic will be syndication. We'll create a video, maybe even right now, to help promote um, the, uh, the show for next month. And, um, and this is another great practicing way to, uh, to make a video to promote an event. So um, I think what, what I'll do, maybe George, is just uh, Hold on to you here, and we can we can sort of do like a 360. Ooh, that's kind of cool, huh? And I don't think we can get the audience from up here, but uh, we can say we can say something about syndication, and we can start turning like all the different. You'll have to say something about syndication. Yeah, yeah I'll say something. I don't about know much syndication. about. I'll just stand here and look. Okay. Pretty. Okay. And rolling in three, two. Have you ever thought, how do I get more people to watch my video? My name is Anthony Pritchard, and I'm here at the Denver YouTube Professionals with my good friend George Ira Carroll. Hi, how's it going? He's got a good smile, doesn't he? <laughs> well, everybody needs to see that smile, but nobody can see that smile unless you get it in front of a lot of people. Pull that smile out, show it to people. <laughs> so next month, the Denver YouTube Professionals will be having uh, our group right here in the Denver Open Media Studio A, television studio, and we'll be teaching you how to post your videos on, on all different places over the internet so that more people can see that smile. So just let it shine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I hope that'll work. <laughs> so that's a, that's a wrap? That's a wrap. That's a wrap.